Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a walkthrough video for bar graph percentage, word problem 6.2. This is a worksheet from MassSalamanders.com. MassSalamanders has tons of great resources, so make sure to check out their entire page for things that might be helpful for you, anything math. So for these problems, we're going to be finding the percentage of pies sold on these different days and the different types of pies. So what we need to know here is a couple things. In order to figure out a percentage, we need to know the part over the whole. Okay, so in this case, our whole is going to be the total number of pies. So I'm going to write total here. So we want to know the part over the total. In this case, for number one, we want to know how many apple pies were sold. So the part for number one is going to be apple pies, or the number of apple pies specifically. So I'm going to go ahead here and just total this up. Look at my totals for the bar graph. For apple pie, we have 26. For pumpkin, we have 15. Cherry, we have 17. Then we have 8. And then for this uh, pecan pie, uh, chocolate pie was 8. Cherry was 17. And then pecan, we have, what is that? 14 for that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the total first by adding these all up. We have 26 plus 14. That is equal to 40. Plus 15, that's equal to 55. Plus 17, that will take us to... I believe that is 72, and then we have eight more here, and that will take us to a total of 80. So 80 is going to be the total number of pies. So for number one, we want to know the number that are apple pies, the part over the total. So the total, like I said, was 80. Let's go ahead and write that in. So 80, and then this is going to give us our percentage after we multiply by 100. Okay, I forgot that piece. We can get the decimal form of the part over the total, but to get the percentage, we have to multiply by 100 because percentages are out of 100. And then we have 26 apple pies out of 80, and then we're going to multiply this by 100, and we're going to get our answer. Okay, so what's the process? How do we go from 26 over 80 into uh, a decimal? Okay, how do we go from this into a decimal? Well, what we're going to do here is you can divide. Okay, so we can do 26 divided by... 80, and that will give you an answer. Okay, so you can use long division that way, or I'm going to propose to you another way. We're going to use the box method for long division. Okay, you may have seen this before, you may not, but my students really like it. It's a uh, kind of a more simple, organized way for doing long division. So I have 26, and it's the same process as long division. I'm going to say how many times uh, 80 goes in 26, and it's zero. Oh, I forgot one line here for my box method. I like having this extra line. Okay, this is not my unique method, but I do like using it, and I did make some modifications to it. So we have 80 goes into 26 zero times, so I get 26 as my remainder. And because I can't go anywhere, it's not zero remainder 26, I have to make it into a decimal, so I'm going to add a decimal point. I'm going to add a box, and then I'm going to put a zero. It's because if I make this 26.0, it's the same value. But now what I do is I carry this 26 up to the next column over and now it becomes 260 so how many times does 80 go into 260 well i know it goes into 24 three times so 240 sorry 240 goes in three times and that's probably going to be the closest i can get so i'm going to put three here and i know that's 240 so i'm going to subtract here and i get a remainder of 20. now i'm not done okay so i can't just have a remainder here i try to have no remainder with decimal division so I need to make another column here, another box, and I'm going to put a zero here so I don't change the value. I could keep making zero columns if I wanted to, but let's just go step by step. And now I have 200 because I carry this up to the next column over. So 80 goes into 200 how many times? Well, it's not going to be three because that's 240, so it's going to be two, and that's going to be 160. So when I subtract those, I'm going to have 40 left over. Okay, we're subtracting here, 200 minus 160. And then I have a remainder again, so I need to bring it over to the next column. Next column is zero. I plug the 40, carry it up to the next column, so now it becomes not just zero, but four, zero, zero, 400. And I know that goes in five times, and that is exactly 400 this time. Again, that's 80 times five is 400, and I have remainder zero. And that's what I'm looking for. You wanna make sure for decimal division that you get to remainder zero. So I have point uh, three, two, five. Now, like I said, I need to make that into a percentage. So I have 0.325 times 100. Any times you multiply by a number, 100, you're going to move the decimal place two times to the right. So my percentage becomes 32.5%. Kind of a tough one to start on. 
But once you understand that principle, if you can handle this tougher problem, you can handle all these problems, okay? So let's move on to uh, what percentage of pies sold were pumpkin or cherry. So let's talk about here's pumpkin and there's cherry. So we can do 15 plus 17. That gives us 32. So our part out of our whole is 32 out of 80. And then we're going to multiply that by 100, and that's going to tell us what our percentage is, and we're going to write it there. Now, again, you can use the box method. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that quickly. I kind of need more room for it, but we'll make do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of copy this box. Let me go ahead and grab it. I'm going to try to duplicate it as much as I can. So we can copy this box, and we're going to play, paste it down here if I can. And I don't think I can. So we're just going to redraw it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and write this box down. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to put 32 inside, 80 goes on the outside. Okay. And what's going to end up happening here is we're going to end up going to 320 and putting a decimal down. Okay. So it's zero, goes in zero times. Uh, and we're going to put a decimal down. And now we say, how many times does 80 go into 320? It goes in exactly four times. And that's going to be 320, remainder zero. So 0 0.4 is our answer. So if you multiply this, move the decimal over by 100, move the decimal over twice, and that's going to give us 40% for that one. Okay, so that one, that's a box method was actually fairly simple. And now we're talking about which ones were chocolate or pecan. So chocolate or pecan, we're going to total those two guys up. That's 14 plus 8. And that gives us, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm struggling here. <laughs> 22 uh, over 80. Okay, so we're going to do 22, and we're going to divide that by 80. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing, box method here. I'm going to erase it this time. So we have 22. Okay, oops, I keep the 80 there. And now it's going to go in here. We know it's going to go in zero times, so I can go ahead and add a zero in there and then see how many times 80 goes into 22, and that's twice, and that's 160, and that gives us a remainder of 60. I'm going to add a column, and now it's going to be 600. I know that goes in seven times, and that's 560. And that's going to be a remainder of 40. Carry 40 over to the next one. There's a zero. There's 40, and it goes in five times, and that's going to be 400. Finally done. No remainder, and that's what we're looking for. No remainder. So I know it's going to be 27.5% after I move the decimal place two times to the right. Okay, so we're done with number one through three. Uh, for pies sold Monday through Friday, now we have a breakdown of the total number of pies. And number four says, fill in the missing numbers in the table. Round your percentages to the nearest whole. So what we're going to do here is we are just going to first calculate the number of uh, total pies. And I think we're just going to kind of estimate here. We have 65 uh, on uh, Tuesday. We have 40 on Wednesday. And Thursday, we have 60. Friday, we have, what is that, 55. And I think that's it. And then we have a total of 300. So we can check to see if we did this correctly by adding these numbers up to see if we get uh, 300. So we have 60 plus 40, um, that's 100. Then we have 60 plus 50, that's 110. 120 with the extra fives, 220. Yes, it does add up to 300, so we're good. Okay, so now percentage of pi sold. There's a couple different ways we can do this. So we know that for this box right here, okay, I'm going to change colors actually. For this box right here, I am going to do my number of pies sold, that's 80, over my total. Okay, I know my total though, it's 300. So now I have 300 on the bottom. So there's a couple ways to do this. We could do 80 divided by 300, where we could put this in the box. Okay, we can use box method. Or I'm going to show you another shortcut just because I've already shown you the box method. What we can do is we know that a percentage is out of 100, right? So if I'm looking for something out of a 100 instead of 300, I know I'd have to divide that 300 divided by 3. So in order to get the top number, I can divide this 80 by 3, and I get the same thing. I get the same percentage as I would using long division. I'm guessing you guys would rather do that anyway because decimal division can be a little tricky sometimes. But it says here we're going to round your percentages to the nearest whole. So that means we don't have to go too far past the decimal place. So what we're going to do here is we are just going to divide by 3. So we're going to do 80 divided by 3. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a box method again here. 80 divided by 3. You might be able to do this in your head also. It's not terribly difficult. But we have 3 goes into 8. Okay, I'm going to go like this to split it into uh, its digits. 
okay? Because we have single digits on the outside, we're going to have single digits on the inside. So we have 80 here. 3 goes into 8 zero times. <laughs> oh my goodness. It goes in twice. I don't know what I was thinking there. And that's 6. And that gives me a remainder of 2. I carry the 2 over to the next one. And now I have uh, 3 goes into 20. That is 6 times. And that's 18. And I have a remainder of 2 again. I think this might be an ongoing thing. So then I have 2 again. Okay, so 3 goes into 20 six times, but I had to add a decimal because I already got done with the original number. The original number was 80. Keep in mind that. So I added a decimal because I got done with that, and I still had a remainder. So I had 26.6. Now, 26.6, round to the nearest hole. That is going to take me to 27%. That's about what is it? what it is, okay? So 27% is it rounded to the nearest hole number. Now, moving on to Tuesday, we have 65. We're going to repeat this process. We have 65 divided by, okay, so we have 65 divided by, I don't know what happened there. Move this over, turn this green. Okay, so 65 divided by 3. So we could do that. So is there a number that goes into 65 three times? I can't think of any off the top of my head, so I'm going to go ahead and do the box method here. So I'm going to divide it by 3 again, so I can just kind of erase this number, just keep the 3 on the outside, and I'm going to divide by 3. You could also do 65 divided by 300. I think that's going to take too long, so I'm just going to put 65 in here. So I know 3 goes into 60, uh, 6 two times, and that's exactly 6, zero remainder. I know 3 goes into 5 uh, one time, and that's 3. Two remainder, I think we're going to have this issue again. I add the decimal because of that. And then I get 20, and that goes in six times. So I have 21.6. And it's going to have a remainder here, but we don't care because we are just rounding to the nearest hole. So I just have to go to one past it. So this is going to be 22% for Tuesday. Okay, so now we are on to Wednesday. So with Wednesday, we uh, have to do the same thing. We could do 40 divided by uh, 300 to find the percentage, or because we know that we divide 300 by 3 to get 100. Okay, let me show that. 300 divided by 3. Again, I mentioned this earlier, but I like repeating it just so we make clear. And then we can do the same thing with 40. So 40 divided by 3, we could get our answer there. So we just need to do 40 divided by 3. I already have my box set up over here. So there's 40. And then I'm going to see how many times 3 goes into 4, and that is 1 time. So I'm subtract 3 there, and I go 4 minus 3. That gives me 1. Then I'm going to carry the 1 over to the next column, so that makes it 10. So 1 goes into 10 three times, and that's going to be 9, and that gives me another remainder 1. Well, this is going to be repeating decimal, okay? So we have 13.3. Rounded to the nearest percentage is going to give us 13%. Now, one of these is actually pretty easy. So Thursday is not bad, okay, because we're going to replace this with 60 instead. Okay, so we know that 300 divided by 3 is 100. What about 60 divided by 3? Well, that's going to give us 20 so 20 over 100 is the same thing as 20%, and that one is actually an easy one. So we have 20% there. Sorry for changing the color so many times, but let's finish up with Friday. Friday is 55. Again, same thing here, 55 over 300. We could do that division, or we could take it over here to the box. Let's erase. So we have 55 here. I'm going to put it in the box. I'm not going to use purple, actually. Let's go ahead and use blue. So I have 55. I know 3 goes into 5 one time. That's 3. And I subtract, and that gives me 2. Carry the 2 up to the next column. We get 3 into 25 eight times. That's 24. Subtract, I get 1. I think you guys have seen this story already. It goes in 3 times. It's 9. And I always going to have 1 in the remainder. It's going to be 18.3. Round to the nearest percent is 18%. So now I need to add these up. I need to add 27 plus... 22 plus 13 plus 20 plus 18, and that should tell me my final percentage, and it should be 100. If I didn't, I messed up somewhere, and that's my final answer. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, lots of kind of division here. Again, you can use uh, a calculator for the multiplication and division. That would make it go a lot quicker, but if you're working on those skills, like in sixth grade, you should probably work on the division, the long division, before using a calculator. If you guys have any other questions on any math topic, make sure to leave a comment, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.